May all of you have started taking steps on the path of liberation. May all of you reach the final goal. What is meant by lofty mind and unlofty mind? Oh, after the four jhanas, when one practices fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, then one imagines the mind to spread, 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 limitless spreading, and that is lofty. And one is not gone to that limitless stage is unlofty. Mahagat or non mahagat. You have mentioned during this course that uh, noting of mental states arising. Hmm? Noting? If you note certain predominant states like anger or fantasy, then what should you do to deal with these situations? Good question. Could you give an example? Yes. When anger is a reason, and you just keep on by noting, it was perhaps not properly understood, by noting, it does not mean that you keep on reciting mentally anger, 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 anger. This will help you to concentrate your mind. This will help you to some extent to understand that there is anger now. But wisdom is missing. Sampajanyang is missing. You just, without repeating this word even mentally, you just accept, now my mind is with anger. Say do so va chittang, say do sang chittang te pajanati. Now mind is a mind of anger. That's all. And what you have to do is uh, start observing the sensation. Any sensation that you are experiencing at that time on your body is related to whatever is the reason in the mind. The anger is connected to whatever sensation you are experiencing. So anywhere, it is not necessary when anger has come and then you move from head to feet, observing every part, not necessary. Wherever there is a predominant sensation, you just observe it and observe it with this understanding arising, passing, sampajana, sampajana. There is anger at the mental level and there is sensation at the physical level and look, it is arising, passing, arising, passing. Similarly, anything else that happens, fear comes, passion comes, ego comes, any kind of impurity that arises in the mind, you are with the sensation. You accept the reality of the mental content and keep on observing the sensation arising, passing. Then it is Sampajano. From what do Kalapas arise? And to what do they pass away? Something cannot come from nothing. <laughs> that means we must know how it originated. Again, one starts running in the field of philosophy, which is mere imagination, speculation, does not help us anywhere. From where it started? From where this Kalapa started? From where this universe started? And how it started? How it was created? With what raw material it was created? And from where those raw material came? Where this raw material started? And then the question will come, who created it? And then from where this creator started? Who is the creator of this creator? And then who is the creator of this creator's creator, creators of creator? This is how all the philosophies have started. The main thing to see is that the creation is going on every moment. At this moment, things are getting created. Kalapas are getting created, rising, passing, rising, passing. And my ignorance towards this arising, passing, arising, passing results in my craving and aversion, which results in my misery. And this is more important for me to come out of my misery rather than just contemplating how it started, where it started. Buddha said they are all irrelevant questions. When one reaches the stage of Aranthud, everything is clear. But for the ordinary person who is just on the path, they are all irrelevant. Things which have nothing to do with your misery, Things which have nothing to do with the cause of your misery. Things which have nothing to do with the eradication of your misery. Things which have nothing to do with the way to eradicate your misery are useless for you. Meaningless. Human life is such a valuable life and such a short life. You can live maximum 100 years or 120 years. Still it is so short. And you have to do such a big job to change the habit pattern of your mind at the deepest level. And reach the final goal of full liberation. Wasting time over such kind of philosophical question does not help us. Leave them aside and work and the reality that you will experience later on will convince everything.
How did ignorance begin? Again, how it begin? <laughs> there was only truth, love, wisdom, knowledge. Ignorance cannot coexist. That's what I say, it cannot coexist. But look, if you start seeing that there is ignorance now at this moment, but I take it away, and the purity comes, at this moment, this moment is more important from you, from what is from the origin, is meaningless. Again, it becomes a philosophy, it doesn't help. What does va denote? Hmm? In Pali language, va means aranyagato va rukkamu, either here or there or there, is va. Who was Lady Sayado's teacher? There is no recorded history, but Lady Sayado says that he went to some monk in Mandalay and there he learned this technique. We don't have the name of the predecessors, but it was the technique even before Lady Sayado. Did the Buddha teach outside of India, that is Burma? There is no evidence for that. He, he teached only in the Ganga, Jamuna, this area, northern India. With all the respect, how may we say a Buddha rediscovered the lost technique when he was taught it and took his vow in front of a previous Buddha? Doesn't he owe his success to the dormant Sangha? Yes, Dhamma remains dormant and somebody has to find out. When you say he took a vow, he was not taught Vipassana. He was fit to be taught Vipassana. There are many, when they come across a fully enlightened one, they get so much inspired and a kind of uh, desire arises that, oh, why I should just get liberate, liberated myself like this person. He's helping liberation of so many. I must also reach the stage where I become a Samma Sambuddha and I liberate so many. And then he expresses this to the Samma Sambuddha, to the fully liberated one. And that Samma Sambuddha, who is there at that time, <clears throat> he will examine the mind of this person. Is it a momentary sentiment or is there any strength in it? If he finds that this person has a background of so many countless eons he has been working, working, working on Dhamma. And now he is at a stage where if Vipassana is given to this person, very soon he will become Narhan. He will become fully liberated. And knowing that, he says, I don't want to become fully liberated now. It may take countless eons. I will develop my parami to such an extent that I will be able to help others. And every life, I'll be helping others, helping others, helping others. This is more important for me. And when he finds, yes, this person has that capacity, then he gives not just a blessing, but also that it will take so long for this person to reach. He gives a prediction. This does not mean that he has been given Vipassana. He was capable of getting Vipassana and getting the stage of Aranthu. At the time, the last life when he became Gautama, then there was darkness. People were talking about Vipassana. The word Vipassana was there. The most ancient literature of India, the scripture, Vedas, and amongst the Vedas also Rig Veda is the, is the most ancient. Very high laudable words are there pertaining to Vipassana. But just words are there. People made rites and rituals. They will just announce those words. They will recite those words. Like this recitation going on. Somebody objected why this recitation going on. Yes, if this becomes only recitation, it doesn't work. But with this recitation, you understand and you work. If you don't work, this just means a right or a ritual. So the word Vipassana was there, but it was just a right or a ritual. Nobody knew what Vipassana is and how to practice it. This person, having tried all different things, because of his parmis of the past, he could go to the depth and discover this technique, which is an old technique. Initially, first time when he experiences it, he says, Pubbe ananusutte sudhamme suchakkhum utapadi. In this dhamma, in this truth, in this law, which I had never heard before. That means it is something new, which I never heard before. Oh, my eyes have opened. That means I could see it now. My eyes, inner eyes have opened. Pubbe ananusutte sudhamme su. 
he says he has never heard. And then later on he says, Purano Maggo. Oh, it is such an ancient path. Purano Maggo. E Samaggo Sanantano. This is the eternal path from so long, so long past. It is there all the time. People forget it. They don't use it. When they don't use it, then it is forgotten. Somebody who becomes a Buddha becomes by rediscovering it and then distributing it to the people. So the path is there. It is dormant. One takes, them, takes it out. Does an entity with sankharas causing rebirth have any choice in circumstances of rebirth? Or this actually is determined by past sankharas? Yes, quite true, past sankharas. <coughs> Whatever sankharas you have from the past, those which are responsible for a new life in the lower fields, they are so powerful that at the time of death, one or the other of that will rise. And when that arises in the mind, which is the last mind of the, this life, then the vibration that is generated gets tuned up with the vibration of that particular plane. And one gets just sucked, sucked there. One can come out of this by practicing vipassana, vipassana, vipassana. If one has practiced vipassana properly, then at the time of death, even, even if there are sankharas, still left sankharas, which are harmful, which may take to the lower. But this practice of vipassana, the vibration of vipassana is so strong that at the time of death, this arises. This arises, then it gets connected with a life where one can practice vipassana. Will not take you to the life where one cannot practice vipassana because this is not the vibration of vipassana, the last moment of the mind. And this is law of nature. Law of nature, you get tuned up with the vibrations of different places according to the vibration that you are, you are generating yourself. So in one way you can say that you can choose. You can choose not to go to the lower fields. That's all. And in another way, you have no choice because if you don't practice vipassana, then something or the other will come and it will sweep away. It will suck away to the deeper levels of misery. If the reward for achieving nirvana, bodily death, <laughs> why practice to die? <laughs> you reach nibbana and this question will be answered automatically. This is not annihilation. Art of dying is a wonderful art. You are learning art of dying which gives you the art of living. Vipassana gives you the art of living. You can't reach that stage which you say death. Even in this life you experience nibbanic stage. The sense doors do not work. It is something like a death. But yet you are fully awakened inside. And this stage can come only if you know how to live, art of living, coming out of, coming out of sankharas, coming out of impurities, and that gives you such a healthy life. So art of living is involved in art of death. Don't get frightened by death. After becoming a liberated person, if you have no more rebirths, where do you live? <laughs> oh, such questions, again, such questions were asked to Buddha time and again, time and again. What happens to an arhant after the death? Tell us. Otherwise, what's the use of my becoming arhant? If I don't know what what's going to happen to me after becoming arhant and after death. Just to satisfy that, the Dhamma is there. What happens after the death of an arhant is experienced by the arhant in this very life. Because when the arhant experiences the fruit of aranthood, the fourth stage of Nibbana. He experiences in this very life. So you understand, oh, this is the ultimate. So after death also, this is what is going to happen. But this cannot be explained. Nobody can explain because this is an experience beyond mind and matter, beyond the entire sensual field. With sense organs, you can't express something which you experience beyond sense organs. Somebody who knows of only three dimensions of the reality, and suddenly one experiences the fourth dimension. How can he uh, tell that fourth dimension? And how can people understand what this fourth dimension is? Exactly the same thing. The Nibbanic stage cannot be explained in words. But the proof is in eating the, the cake. 
you experience it by this practice by the on this path you experience that stage and you are fully convinced what will happen after my death after becoming arhat the i is non existent an illusion how then can this non existent object be reincarnated <laughs> nothing is incarnated this is a flow of this mind and matter which continues the sankhara is the pushing force every life every moment the sankhara sankhara pachya vinyanam sankhara pachya vinyanam one or the other of the sankhara will give the arising of the next moments vinyana again sankhara next moments vinyana at the time of that some deep sankhara strong sankhara gives a push and then again it arises somewhere with some other body so the mind and matter this is a flow of mind and matter continuous flow of mind and matter till you eradicate all your sankhara can a married person who becomes enlightened still have children <laughs> you become enlightened the question will get solved why worry <laughs> as you proceed on the path naturally the sex passion becomes weaker 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 it goes away and you feel still you will you feel so contented so happy then there is no problem of having children so come to that stage and all the questions will get answered we are used to understanding that there is a cause behind every effect if that is so then what is the cause behind the existence of this world of mind and matter ignorance and sankhara because of ignorance we keep on generating sankhara and because of sankhara we keep on multiplying our ignorance these two supporting each other and the entire universe is made because of that nothing else is there any preferred order in which the 10 parmis could or should be stated or listed or do they each have their own unique merit and therefore can be mentioned at random in any way so long as you develop your parmis there is more important in this order or that order it doesn't matter if a family if a fully liberated person is beyond the cycles of rebirth and there is no self does such a person become absolutely nothing after the final death the question is answered now what happens after the final death of a fully liberated person is experienced by this fully liberated person in this very life given the widespread practice of vipassana are there sotapannas anagamis arhans to be found today widespread not widespread it is just a drop in the ocean they are widespread billions of people and how many have started and they have started just in kindergarten and yet there are cases where people have experienced but very few this question is not meant to cause offense are you going ka an enlightened being having these the highest level through the practice of vipassana if not do you know of others who have reached such stage <laughs> one thing very clear that i am not an arhan i am not a buddha but i am on the path to become arhan there is no doubt about that and i have covered certain areas and i have gained by this technique i am a changed person compared to what i was when i started it and one thing and i can say with little bit of surety that i have taken a few more steps than you all have taken that is why i am competent to teach you Walk, walk on the path, and this is the goal that is more important than examining your teacher whether he has become arhant or no arhant. On Vedana, you frequently mention the tradition where Vedana is primary, fundamental. Is there a name for this tradition? Who are the foremost teacher? Yes, like somebody question about Lady Sayadu. he was uh, the person historical person we know before that we don't have names but the tradition was there who gave 
all importance to the sensations, then many of his students worked on it. And some of them became teachers and they started teaching. Then again, they were giving importance to, to Vedana, to sensation. And then out of them, one of the teachers, Sayate, and he had again number of teacher, number of students, and out of them, few of them started teaching. One was Sayaji Ubakin, again Vedana. And Sayaji Ubakin had number of students, and out of them some started teaching, and one is here, and he gives importance to Vedana. So this tradition gives importance to Vedana, body sensations. Oh, then about chanting. <laughs> yes. Understand chanting is done by the teacher, not by the students. Students are not taught how to chant at this stage, at a very high stage. Now it is just a right a ritual for the student. Student's job is not to chant. Student's job is to practice, observe, observe, observe. A teacher has got certain duty to give good vibration to the atmosphere where students are working so that any bad vibration from outside cannot interfere and give any kind of trouble. For that, a sort of protection of good vibration. Mere chanting does not give that good vibration. How one is chanting, that is more important. If one is chanting like a rite or ritual, no good vibration is just a rite or ritual. It's a religious ceremony only. Students who come to a certain stage, some of them, one has to give this lesson of chanting, how to chant which looks like a very kindergarten lesson to chant is so easy. We learn Pali and we chant or we chant in our own language. But no, this is not the Dhamma way of chanting. When you chant, you are aware of sensations, sampajanyan. And every pause between one word and the other word, you are aware of sensation, anicca, anicca, very clearly. And then the next word and the pause and the next word. This gives a vibration, Dhamma vibration in the atmosphere. And this can be done at a higher stage. That is why students are not asked to chant. Only when they reach a certain stage, then they are taught how to chant. And then it is no more a rite or a ritual. Then it is a part of the meditation that in everything you can add the Sampajana. Go in Kaji, please. May all beings be happy. Which part of the being can give or receive metta, not the ego, what else? <laughs> yes, the apparent truth and the ultimate truth. When we do vipassana, we move from the apparent truth, apparent truth to the deepest ultimate truth. But when we go to the deepest ultimate truth, that means, does not mean that we forget all about the apparent truth. The apparent truth is also apparent truth. The apparent truth of this wall is that it is so solid. The apparent truth of my head is that it is so solid. The ultimate truth of the wall is that it is just vibration, nothing but vibration. The ultimate truth of my head is that it is mere vibration. So let the vibration pass through the vibration. I hit the wall, I will break my head. <laughs> Buddha wants you to be aware of both the truths, apparent truth as well as ultimate truth. The ultimate truth there is no being. but when you start working, then you perform wholesome actions, wholesome actions. You come out of unwholesome action. Every time you are generating an unwholesome action, aversion, hatred, ill will, animosity, you are harming yourself. But every time instead of that you generate metta, love, compassion, goodwill, you start helping yourself. And that is how you make your mind better, better, better to go to that depth where you understand the ultimate truth. And you understand both. This is apparent truth. This is ultimate truth. And then you are working whatever is suitable to work to reach the final goal. Mitta helps you to reach the final goal. It appears that your interpretation of the text is not as literal as it could be. How do you know that the interpretation you have taken is correct? Good. What the Buddha intended. Good. The interpretation of Buddha's words we find are different with different people. We are not here to quarrel with them. Because the language is 25 centuries old. 
the meanings change. And even if the meaning remains the same, one cannot understand what this person actually wanted to say. Because this person that he has said something has said with his own experience. And if I have not reached that experience, I won't understand what he wanted to say. So one difficulty with the language is that within these 25 centuries, the same words have started carrying different meanings. And that has created a lot of confusion. And that's why we find different interpretations. Another thing is because people who have never experienced anything in Vipassana has translated Buddha's words. So many translations of Buddha are there, Buddha's words are there. But unfortunately, most of them have never practiced anything as Buddha taught. Therefore, as you practice, it is not that you condemn them. As you practice, you start understanding, oh, this is what Buddha meant because my practice, my experience says so. And perhaps this person who is talking like this has perhaps not meditated or maybe Later on, my experience may be much deeper, but now I must accept whatever I am experiencing. And then there were commentaries written 1,000, 1,500 years after Buddha passed away. According to our research work that we have made, the actual Vipassana in its pure form got lost in India in about 500 years. So when these commentaries were written, commentaries were there earlier also, but somehow they again got lost. And they were available only in the Ceylonese, Sinhalese language in Lanka. Somebody from India went there, translated it into Pali. But then again, he also put his own interpretation there. The commentaries given by such people is wonderful because many places it opens the knots very clear. We understand. The meaning of the word in those days was like this, like this, because so many synonyms are given for such words which are not clear. Like this, it is wonderful. It gives a wonderful picture, a spectrum of the society of that time in India to all kinds of uh, social situations, political situations, educational, cultural, religious, philosophical, and different things become so clear by these commentaries. They are very helpful. But at times, when there is a difference, our experience says something else, and we find the commentary says something else, then we have to go to Buddha's words. We have to make a search in Buddha's words. What Buddha said in, for similar thing, we go through that. And if you find some explanation directly given by Buddha, which is so clear, that without con comment, condemning the, the commentaries, we have to accept that. And this is how some differences have arisen. And perhaps this is what this person is talking about. Like say this word Vedana. Now, when, when Vedana, in a particular tradition, they say Vedana is only mental Vedana. And they are quite correct in their own way. Because mental Vedana is a part of those four aggregates of the mind. Vedana is a part of those four aggregates. And when somebody is practicing Vedana Anupashana, it must be mental. But when you go deeply into the words of Buddha, he has given so clear, clear explanation that when I talk of Sukha Vedana, it is body. When I talk of Dukha Vedana, it is body. When I talk of Somanasya Vedana, then it is mind. When I talk of Domanasya Vedana, then it is mind. And here, the teaching of Satipatthana talks of only Sukha Vedana and Dukha Vedana. And then not at one place, number of places where he talked of Vedana, he talks of the body. How Vedana arises in the body. How Vedana passes away in the body, like that the difference is there. But when we go through the exact word of Buddha and make a search in that, we find an explanation which goes in line with the experience. Like this word Sampajano, it has created so much confusion. The translation given in different languages and so also in English is clear comprehension. Now what clear comprehension? Clear comprehension of what? Clear comprehension is somebody is walking and says, clear comprehension of walking, then one is clear comprehension of walking only. This is only Sati. No Sampajano is involved. And he says Sampajano. The word Sampajano means Samma Panya Janeti. With Panya, proper Panya, perfect Panya, one is understanding what it is. 
and panya is nothing but the law of nature arising passing anicca dukkha anatta one of these three and then we make a search make a search in buddha's words and in find buddha gives the explanation what is sampajanya sampajanya is vidita vedana upajyati you are observing the vedana coming up you are feeling the vedana coming up you are feeling the vedana going away this is sampajanya and if you miss vedana if you miss the sensation on the body and you are just aware of walking walking eating eating it is good for kindergarten to start with just i said it is good if somebody says e ching e ching e ching e ching and doesn't say this is an icha doesn't even understand this is an icha at least to start with it is all right but ultimately this must take to the stage where one understand this an icha look a reason passed away this e ching a reason arising passing away that is sampajan if this is not included then the difficulty comes like sati parimukham now translation is given keeping the attention in front now what confusion has started because of this keeping the attention in front then people sit down and make imagination my attention is in front outside outside the body somewhere as if there is somebody who looks to this body from outside the whole technique was lost he wants you to observe the reality within the real within the body kaye kaya anupassi vedana su vedana anupassi in the vedana you to feel vedana in the body you to feel body not from outside so these interpretations of the words differ from different people to different people but what we do is we take shelter in buddha's words if there is any difference of our experience pertaining to the belief of different other traditions or if there is a difference with the commentaries then we go to the buddha and there we try to search and that is why this vipassana research association has been established to go through all the buddha's words make use of the modern apparatus this computers and all that and search where a particular word is there and the computer says it is here 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 is huge literature 40 50 volumes of 3 400 pages each huge literature for one to go through all of that and then remember where vedana had come where vedana he said now the computer helps us and we go through that particular part and we see how vedana is used here by buddha how this sampajana word is used here by buddha and this helps us and that is why the different comes it comes we can't help it but again we don't insist that idam satyam whatever i am saying is the truth and nothing else there is no attachment to it whatever i experience whatever i understand from the direct words of buddha that is what i am saying because the same thing is said by this line of teachers from whom i got it i found all of them among them they were people who had reached very high stages and they are understanding in the same way by their experience i am understanding it same way in my experience and thousands of people around the world are experiencing the same thing in by their own experience so we are confident that whatever we are teaching is correct according to the buddha's way if any doubt is there i would say practice this only will take out doubt nothing else if this technique does not suit your mind does not suit your uh, rational brain rational intellect then leave it work with something else but work with something else to go to the final goal don't keep on mixing don't keep on running here and there but if you find that this is a technique which gives you result then work on it and go deeper 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 all the questions will get solved a time does come in the life of a good meditator having learned just a knowing knowledge just a little knowledge of pali and when one starts reading the words of buddha it becomes so clear as if buddha is saying this to me buddha is directing me you better do like this not like this you better do like this it will become so clear all these words will become so clear they will become clear only by experience not just by arguments not by debates not by unnecessary intellectualization that should be there but at the same time this is more important your experience is more important you have come to a course like this of satipatthana not only to listen to the words of buddha and the particular interpretation given by a particular teacher but to experience it you have started experiencing it you have taken free few courses then only you have joined it and now keep on going deeper 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 so that the buddha's teaching becomes so clear 
the law of nature becomes so clear to you at the experiential level so that you get mix yourself free from all these sankharas so that you start experiencing the real liberation within yourself and ultimately you reach the goal goal of full liberation of full libra nibbana may all of you who have started walking on the path the right path have started taking right steps in the right direction although the path is very long doesn't matter how long the path may be it starts with the first step and you have taken first step you have taken second step and step by step step by step you are bound to reach the final goal may all of you have started taking steps on the path of liberation may all of you reach the final goal may all of you enjoy real happiness of liberation real peace of liberation real happiness of liberation real peace of liberation bhavat sarv mangalam bhavat sarv mangalam bhavat sarv